TriMet has a new video out about the Southwest Corridor Project, and you know I'm a big fan of the TriMet propaganda because it's it's so good. It's so good. I mean, their marketing stuff really is first class, and and it, it is a great view of government in general. Because if you look around, all these government bureaucracies, agencies, they are they're all little kingdoms, and they all have their own directors, and they all have their little fiefdoms. Every single one of them: the city of Portland, Metro, TriMet, State of Oregon, ODOT, federal government, Donald Trump. You know, all of these government entities are little fiefdoms and they all operate very similarly so when you when you study TriMet you're basically studying all of government that's one of the reasons I was so fascinated with it is because it's a government study and so they have their new uh, video out and so let's take a look at their new Southwest Corridor um, project you know they're getting they're keying up for a tax referendum and every city on the west coast has passed something now Port was the last one, and I'm sure they waited on purpose so that they could piggyback on Seattle and Los Angeles and San Francisco, and, uh, you know, they're pretty smart over there at, uh, at Harrison Street. These, these are not dumb people. The southwest area of our region, from south of downtown Portland, to Tigard and Tualatin. Already, already brilliant in the fact that they've, uh, here's your historical, they're showing the ancient pictures, so they've got people thinking about history. Because remember, this is all mind manipulation. All of this stuff is, is genuine propaganda to get people to, uh, manufa they're, they're manufacturing consent for this. So you have to look at this from the right frame of mind. This is government propaganda trying to affect the minds of the citizens to give the government what they want. Started out as sleepy suburbs of a big city. Now they are getting bigger themselves, bustling with more residents, more families, more businesses, more of everything. 46,000 students attend universities and colleges in the area, including OHSU, PCC Sylvania, and George Fox University. Not only are there 200,000 residents in the area, but if the more than 240,700 people who work in the Southwest Corridor were considered one city, that city would be bigger than Eugene. We have a lot of retirement communities here, and I have heard from seniors, they don't always want to have to drive their car. I mean, my husband currently commutes from Sherwood to Vancouver. His evening commute can run anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour and a half. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I mean, uh, <laughs> you know, I love to I love to watch this. Don't forget, light rail is only good during commute rush hours. Okay, it's very most of the time. I have no idea. I would say that seventy five percent of the time you can drive without a problem. It's just that morning and evening rush hour that the highways get packed. They never, they never seem to mention that. They always say, oh, it takes me an hour and a half. It only takes you an hour and a half during rush hour. It doesn't take you an hour and a half off rush hour. So, you know, this is misleading, and they got the nice music, and she looks good, and, and let's not forget, light rail is not all that reliable. I mean, if you've been listening to the scanner along with me, uh, you see that it's, it's not all that reliable. It's stressful, it gives anxiety, it, it makes it a waste of a lot of life because we spend so much time in our cars getting from point A to point B. So that, that's a red herring argument because it, it, transit takes longer than driving, okay? As I said, in the rush hours you might beat your cars, but the rest of the time it's not. And even, and even in a rush hour, light rail, unless you're going to the exact point that the light rail is servicing. I mean, if you're going from, you know, from point A to point B on the light rail, you're not going to be saving any time. Don't forget, you have to get to the light rail. Now, if you drive to the light rail, you have to drive, find a place to park, you have to wait for the train, and then you go down the light rail, and if it doesn't stop where you need to be, you have to get to where you need to be. So this, this is a red herring argument that it's faster. It's not, it's not true. We need options. We know people are going to continue to move to Oregon, so somehow we need to learn to manage that growth. With more people coming. 
They need to learn how to manage it. Well, they haven't managed the growth. That's the point. They have not managed the growth. This growth is happening in a vacuum. The infrastructure provided is not capable of handling the growth, but yet they're allowing the growth. So you see what's happening is they're creating, government is creating the problem and then telling you there's a problem and then they want you to give them money to say, solve the problem that they created. And, and this is this is the scam of government right here. Comes more traffic. As bad as congestion is now, it is estimated that there will be 13 to 17 hours of congestion a day on Interstate 5 between Portland and Tigard by 2035. That may be true. Um, we don't know. So say that it is true. Light rail does not. <laughs> this is pretty well known. I don't know if, how many people are aware, but light rail is not going to decrease traffic. The amount of impact that light rail makes on traffic is not even measurable. All right. Look at look at the blue line, man. Look at I eighty four and I twenty six. It's huge. It's a huge mess. The light rail makes no visible impact on traffic, but yet. All these government agencies, from Sound Transit to LA Metro, make this argument that somehow these new rail lines are going to uh, solve traffic problems. You know, that's just like Donald Trump saying on all the lies that he comes up with. He just makes these statements and he expects everybody to believe it. Well, that's what they're doing. So next time Donald Trump lies, remember, everybody in government lies. It's not just him. All of these people involved with this lie to suit what they want. Traffic is getting terrible. It's bad and it's only getting worse. If we expect to grow, we're only going to get worse. It isn't going to get any better. In the next uh, 20 years, we're expecting 400,000 people in the region, and we're going to see at least 25. You know, I've been following this material from around the world, around, around the country, and they all have the same, they all have the same exact statement. The area is going to grow by 400 to 500,000 in the next 10 years. Every single place says the exact same thing. I don't you find that a little odd coincidence that every single area says the exact same thing? I find it a little bit odd thousand people in Tiger alone and so anything we could do to add to that capacity will help us along the way. Congestion is a huge problem here not just in Tiger but the whole southwest corridor. This is just part of the solution. Existing transit, highways and roads are barely keeping up with today's demand, much less robust enough to meet tomorrow's needs. Did you know that 55 percent No, no, the fact of the matter is they're not keeping up with today's demand. They don't even, they are not sufficiently staffed to even do what they're doing this is the truth all right you listen to the scanner listen listen to the tweets listen to people people are passed up buses are too full trains are too full they don't have the capacity to meet the demand now okay this is not i'm not making that up because i'm a light rail hater i'm, I'm telling you the truth they don't have the capacity to meet demand now and, and here they are trying to keep going well we know why they want to keep going because there's a light rail mafia it's a real thing it exists it's controlling public policy Santa Barbara Boulevard does not have a sidewalk on both sides forcing people to walk in the road or so so Barbara Boulevard doesn't have a place to walk well whose fault is that well, I mean why doesn't it have a place to walk they're trying to tell us now, well, give us the money so we can put a place to walk when they've had all these years to do it. But they've done all this other shit around Portland, but they didn't bother with that. You know, it's, it's bullshit. It's a lie. There's no place to walk because the people in charge didn't do it. Across the several busy wide lanes of traffic. 30 years ago when I moved here, I could drive in 20 minutes all the way downtown Portland. Now, I need to avoid rush. Right. Well, 30 years ago, I lived in San Francisco on Portola Boulevard on Twin Peaks in an apartment that cost 600 a month. So 30 years ago and now, they're not, there's no connection really. I mean, those of us that are older know, we don't know what happened. What happened? Okay, I'll tell you what happened. Government didn't do what it needed to do. That's why the infrastructure is a piece of shit. That's why Trump campaigned on that because we had been ignoring it and he was right about that. Okay, Donald Trump was right about all some of the, he wasn't a complete idiot. He had points that were really right on, and one of them was the infrastructure. They've ignored the goddamn infrastructure. Now they want us to pay for it. Showers, lunch hours, 
and Saturday mornings if I want to drive anywhere. We have anywhere from five to seven communities driving through Tigard commuting because of the high-tech corridor out in Hillsboro as well as driving to Portland. But there is a plan to meet not only current demand for transit, but also future demand. The Southwest Corridor Light Rail Project will bring more reliable, faster, and frequent travel options to hundreds of thousands of families, students, and employees. Now that's the accurate marketing, okay? It will bring an option. It brings an option. You know, to market it honestly, okay, do you citizens of Tiger and the rest of the county agree to fund this project so that you can have another option to get to Portland, okay? That's an honest marketing. You know, not going to realize that what they're going to get is crappy public transportation because what you see in the United States is crappy public transportation. not reliable. It's, it's not clean. It's scary. What you're going to get is what you've got now, which is very crappy public transportation. But they market it. They should market it honestly. Like, we'll give you this other option, okay? Give us $2 billion dollars so that we can fill some pockets and, and make some nice executives rich and with nice pensions. And we'll give you a light rail line, and we'll charge you to use the light rail line, and we'll fine you $200 if you don't have a ticket. You know, you, <laughs> you don't get me going. And it will improve sidewalks and bike facilities so that people can easily connect to the new service. 99 is just terrible with regard to the amount of traffic that there is. It's <laughs> They've got a fryer. I've got a Catholic friar pitching it. Oh my God, man. It's, well, they stoop to nothing. It's going to get even worse. Uh, right now, there are many people who don't drive, who don't have that transportation, so this will be helpful. If we don't do something now, we are going to all be gridlock for the entire time we leave our house to, if we get to work. That's, that's the sound transit timeline. Give us the billions now. We'll give you something in 20 years from now. I mean, anybody, I, you know, I can't believe people actually vote for this stuff. I, I really can't, but they do. They do, you know, look, the electorate is stupid. I mean, just look at our current politicians and look at our current policies and look who's in office and look what's going on. Look what's going on locally, look what's going on nationally. You can see the buffoons that are in charge. And all those buffoons were elected by the people. And so it's easy to fool the public, but it's not easy to fool me. I vote no. I don't vote yes on anything that will expand government power. Nothing. I don't care what it is. Because I know the truth. That, you know, we can't stop these Democrats and Republicans from killing us because we're stuck in the paradigm. But we don't have to give them our money on top of it all, at least not, by, at least not voluntarily. Make them take it. You know, what they'll do is if you don't pass it, they'll go to their cronies in the state house and, and pass it there. But they're going to get the money one way or the other. The easiest way for them to get it is to manufacture consent, tell us how wonderful it is, and let us all vote. Yes, here, take our money. Take our money, wonderful government, and provide us with some shitty public transportation.